So before we even begin to uh, access our MyNode, it's probably worthwhile jumping into how our networks at home work. So I've got this diagram here and what it is, is it shows us how our network at home could potentially look like or is probably the more stock standard network at home. So let's just go through this diagram. Now here is the World Wide Web, the internet, and that will come through into our uh, uh, off the street or a wireless signal, uh, a cable. And so that will then hook into our modem. Now our modem will have what's known as an external IP address. The external IP address is uh, provided by the provided by your internet service provider. And so it'll look something to this effect. Um, and the numbers will change obviously, uh, but it is a unique identifier to your internet connection. And so that's something that we should be looking to protect. I won't go into how you can protect that, but it is something that you should be looking to protect, okay? Because this is a unique identifier to your household, okay? Now, from the modem, uh, you will typically find that there will be another uh, ethernet cable running into what's known as a router. Now, the router's job is to route traffic, believe it or not, um, and it will have an input of the internet, okay, coming from the World Wide Web. Now, the router will typically also have four uh, slots or four ethernet uh, ports for you to plug your devices into. It will also potentially broadcast a Wi-Fi signal. Now, sometimes uh, the modem and the router are combined to one device, and so you'll get a modem router. But it just depends on each case, okay? Typically, what will happen is that you will have a modem and a router, or it might be um, pushed into one device, okay? And the router will handle internal IP addresses. And those internal IP addresses typically, and this uh, changes from manufacturer to manufacturer, router to router, but typically the internal IP address of the router itself is 192.168.1.1. I've also seen it as 192.168.0.1. I've also seen it as 192.168.1.254. I've also seen uh, some routers that start with the number 10 dot, so on and so forth. Okay, so what we have here is a a, a network um, of how our our internet comes through. Then we have what's um, known as our, our devices, okay? Then we have our devices. So, for example, this particular here uh, device here is my, and this is just an example, um, <clears throat> is your desktop. And the router will assign an internal IP address of 192.168.1.2. Now, it may assign a different number, it, it, it just depends. Um, usually it's sequential, however, it, it really just depends on the number of devices you have, how your a router is configured, so on and so forth. But typically, uh, that is what will happen. Then, sometimes what you'll also do is broadcast a Wi-Fi signal. And when you connect to that Wi-Fi signal, the router will, for example, uh, give your laptop an IP address, an internal IP address of 192.168.1.3. And same thing with your mobile phone. Uh, if you're connecting to your Wi-Fi, uh, then it will give it and assign it a 192.168.1.4. These numbers will be different for every uh, network, but generally that is how it works. Now, the other thing with routers is that you can access your router if it's on the same network, okay? so. Uh, if you type in your browser 192.168.1.1 or any of the other derivatives of whatever your router is, you will come to a router page. Now your router page will have a username and a password. 
I would recommend that you uh, log into here and see what's going on if you never have done so. Consumer grade routers typically have a default username and password. So it's really important um, that we change that username and password because if we are giving, say for example, uh, a friend the Wi-Fi signal um, or, or, or people that we don't trust the Wi-Fi uh, to our home, they can potentially access our router okay, and, and they can mess with it, with our network. The other thing that you'll want to uh, make note of is that if you want to access information across these devices, that is possible. So say for example you have a, a, a device that's coming in off the, uh, that you've given the Wi-Fi password to, and that now device can access information across all of these, um, all of these uh, devices. Now, with our MyNode in particular, we've connected that via an Ethernet cable into a Raspberry 4. In this particular example, it's been given the IP address of 192.168.1.5. Okay. Now, in your router page at 192.168.1.1, that will have lots of configuration details. We can change our uh, Wi-Fi password. We can change the broadcast name of the Wi-Fi pass uh, of the Wi-Fi network itself, uh, and we can do a whole bunch of things um, within. Uh, the scope of what our consumer grade router uh, will allow us to do. Now, the MyNode um, will be accessed, can be accessed through, if they are on the same network, um, can be accessed through the desktop, the laptop, or the Android phone. And you'll be able to access it by typing into the browser 192.168.1.5. The way that you'd find this number is through accessing the um, the router's uh, IP address and having logging in and having a look at the attached devices section of the router page, and there it will have a nice um, detailed list of all the devices on your network, their associated IP address, and their potentially even their MAC address. And a MAC address is typically a unique identifier to that particular device. So these are some of the things that uh, you'll need to know as you access the MyNode. Now, the MyNode is also can be uh, accessed through just typing into your browser mynode.local or https colon slash slash mynode.local. Okay. So that's um, how uh, this would would be accessed, your MyNode would be accessed from any one of these devices that are connected on the same network. Now, the Raspberry Pi 4 or the MyNode software uh, will have a splash screen. And the splash screen will show a an input to a password. So that password um, will be Bolt. That is the default password. I would recommend that you change that as well because any of these devices can access this particular device here. So it's really important that we change the default password and I'll show you that a little bit later when we get into it. So in summary here, there's three things that we need to, uh, well, there's a few things that we need to understand. Number one, our external IP address needs to be protected. Our router, the 192.168.1.1, that address, that username and password to access our router, that needs to be quite secure and not a default password. Um, and the Wi-Fi signal that we are broadcasting, that needs to be a fairly strong uh, password as well. The reason that I'm saying this is because now if somebody has access to your network, uh, sure, previously, you'd be up for some sort of privacy concerns. But now with the uh, invention of Bitcoin, Bitcoin being stolen from your net within your network is a possibility. There is now a honeypot to running a potential node or even people knowing that you run a node. So it's, it's important 
that we make sure that our um, our our network is quite secure. The other thing that I would make mention is for these passwords that you are I, I've just suggested three passwords to be changed. Now it's important that you use a password manager. If you haven't heard of one, look it up. I recommend Bitwarden. That's the one that I'm most familiar with. Um, but there's others out there like LastPass and KeePass and there's plenty of password managers out there. But it's important to use one um, and to make sure that those passwords are secure in a, in a uh, yeah, and, and make sure that you have access to them when you need them. The other thing that you can take advantage of with a um, with with some of these consumer grade routers is for better privacy or be more security. Really, um, what we can do is we can use what's known as the guest networks or the guest uh, Wi-Fi. So what that would mean is that your router has this functionality whereby it will broadcast two separate Wi-Fi networks. One that is the real network, which possibly contains your node, and another guest one, whereby the guests have no access to other um, devices. So the Android phone can no longer talk to the Raspberry Pi. And so these setups of guest Wi-Fi's allows you to put devices that you don't trust into the uh, into a separate Wi-Fi that cannot be accessed or, or, or they cannot be accessed uh, through other from other devices so that's really handy and I would encourage that you use that functionality and you explore that functionality such that um, you're not contaminating the devices within your home for example you might have an Alexa you might have a Chromecast you might have you know uh, a, an array of phones um, that your family uses, it's really important to partition these all off such that uh, the only thing that is on your real network um, is, is the devices that you really trust and you have ownership of and you understand what is on each of those machines. So make use of the guest Wi-Fi, reset your router password, reset your uh, Wi-Fi password, reset the password to the uh, MyNode itself and put those passwords into a password manager. Okay, That would be my advice to you. Obviously you can do as you please but keep in mind that security is now of the utmost importance because depending on where your private keys are stored, um, for example when we go into Lightning Network the private key of the um, of the node of the Lightning Network node uh, will contain funds uh, that will be permanently on on the actual Raspberry Pi and permanently connected to the internet as well. So that presents a potential risk. Um, so it's just really important that we secure up our network and make sure that we understand the traffic that's going through them. This is at a basic level of how general uh, consumer grade routers will work um, and so I'm expecting the majority of people to fall under this sort of uh, um, network um, and so yeah just make sure that we are doing and securing up our network because Bitcoin once it gets stolen uh, consider it gone uh, and you won't get that money back. Um, and there is now an added incentive for people to snoop through networks uh, looking for private keys. So just make sure that your passwords are secure, you're using some form of password manager, um, uh, yeah, and making sure that all your devices are pretty much locked down.